Raimo Raimo Pardanens Memoirs, Part 1. My life in Suojärvi, Hevosuo, and in the forest of the West. I was born in Suojärvi, Suvilahti, 14th of January 1936. It is also the birthday of our great writer, Sakari Topelius. I was the oldest child of Jaakko and Maria Partanen. My father was born in Suojärvi and mother more south in Suistamo. Mom was a few years younger than dad and her maiden name was Laakkonen. After me followed four brothers and four sisters. The youngest was 12 years younger than I. Father worked for the state railroads as a steam engine fireman. Mother looked after the house and the 25 hectare farm. As far as I know, Bardanens had lived in Suojärvi for about 300 years. So went the first four years of my life living in peace at home. When the Winter War started, the 30th of November 1939, I was about four years old. I have some memory when we were evacuated, and on the way to the railroad station, we saw over the bay when the Suojärvi Kaipa sawmill was burning. I think the mill was owned by Aunus Wood Company. Women were crying and the whole atmosphere was scary. There was some snow on the ground. There were only a few men around. Father was at work on the railroad engine. From the train journey I remember a man who had lost his control and had to be held down. We were taking on the train to western Finland to Lauka town. We got a small abandoned two-room house to live in. Water would freeze inside, the house too was so cold. It happened that the sauna we were using burned down, and it was the same scary feeling again. I remember that this same village had ended up the owner of the great Bomba house from our district. In the sauna, this big man once slipped and fell on me. In that place, men and women went to sauna together. We were in Lauka until the spring when schools were out. Then we moved again to a place by a river. There we lived in now empty schoolhouse. At this time, father also came to live with us. Next place was Killingoski, where we moved during the summer. There was born our next child, Rista. The whole year and a half of peacetime until fall of 1941, we stayed in that place. There I also saw my first Santa Claus. Near our place was a church where slight pictures were shown. I remember the many soldiers that were around. In Kilinkoski I tried for the first time smoking. Near the church we had built a small shelter from branches. That caught fire and almost burned the church too. I was not to blame for this one because I was in a hospital with a sore knee. There were a lot of men in the hospital, after I knew that they were wounded soldiers. Father was doing woodwork, dishes, furniture, etc., some for ourselves, some for sale. After the continuation war started in June 1941, the Finns regained their lost land and advanced quite far to East Karelia. We were able to move back to our home village. I don't remember anything about the move. When we got there, we saw that there were two buildings standing. One was our sauna. That became our first home. 
I was sleeping under the table. Our next home was six-sided cardboard tent. It was a fine house in the summertime. Then the Russians' plane started shooting all ground targets and our tent had to be taken down. I think that was summer of 1942. Our living got better when two rooms were added to the sauna. Father had stored some building material for a new barn before the Winter War, but that too was now burned. Father was born in 1904 and too old to go to the front. During the Continuation War he left his job with the state railroads and learned bricklaying work. I started school during the war in Suojärvi. The war ended badly for the Finns and we lost the Karelia land again. The second time we left Suojärvi was June 23, 1944. It was the eve of midsummer Johannes. It was, I was eight years old and remember quite a lot about those times. When we left, all our belongings were in our four-wheeled wagon. Two cows and a young calf were tied to it and following, and following us. The calf did not want to leave and put on the brakes. The first night we stayed at some school. They were giving away school materials and we took some too. Our journey to Vitasari had started. At some point, we got, got on the train, and father alone was driving the horse and wagon. We had five children now, myself, Riley and Raya born before the war in Suojärvi, Ritva born in Suojärvi during the war, and Risto born where we were in Killinkoski. We got off the train in Suolahti, central Finland. From there we continued on a barge to Vita Sari. Loading the barge was not easy. There were people, animals and noise. Children had to be watched that they do not fall in the water. We walked under the barge on a wooden board. In Vita Sari we settled in Kokkola house in Karna village. Sometimes the house was on an island and sometimes we could walk to it when the water was low. The house had two rooms and one room we now lived three families. Others lived in the other room. The owners lived in the other room. The two rooms were separated with about one meter space in between. In Kokkola house we did not stay the whole summer. We moved to Puronsu in Vitasari. Before the winter our parents moved to Rintama in Pasala village in Vitasari. Children were taken to different places. The three oldest ones went to Larsmo near Pietrasari on the west coast in Swedish speaking area. Two-year-old Risto went to a place called Forsby, also in Swedish-speaking area. Ritva was a baby and stayed with the mother. Rintama was an orphanage where our parents got an old sauna to live in while the new one was finished. In there, father did carpentry and other work. The place was kept by the Pentecostal church. Three of us, me and two sisters, were in Larsmo until the fall. Before the school started, we were moved to Salahmi village in Vierema County in North Savo province. As soon as the load of kids got off the truck, we saw a pile of drainage pipes on the ground. We all started hitting them with rocks because it made such an interesting sound. Brother Risto appeared during the winter from Forsby. He spoke Swedish now and said to me, Come here. I had missed my brother and now he did not know me anymore. Called me Yalo. Then I started crying. The place we lived in was a fine country manor. I think it was fall 1944. 
In Salahmi, I went to school on second grade. When school ended in the spring of 45, we children joined our parents in Vitasari, Rintama orphanage. Here, three additions to the family were uh, Reino, 1944, Rauha, 46, and Reyo, 47. Rintama neighbors were in Skutnap religion. They were not allowed to greet unknown people, did not wear a tie, and did not keep pictures. We lived in Rintama Beach House many years until we moved to our permanent place in Hevussuo, seven kilometers from the city of Kajane in central Finland. The whole area was cleared for a settlement for Karelian refugees. Other area next to it was Terisuo. We all got some land for a small farm. The other place we could have gone was Egypt in Korpi halfway between Nurmes and Lieksa. Egypt in Korpi means the wilderness of Egypt. In the fall of 1948 I went to Vainemönen school in Kajani. President Kekkonen went to the same school. Our unsettled gypsy life now ended and we lived normal life. Father had gone to Hevosu a year earlier and built their one building. In that building we lived people in one end and the animals in the other. Here in Kayani, uh, 1948, Rauno was born and added to the family. Animal noises came clearly to the wall. Because of our Karelian dialect, we children sometimes we called Russians. My first language was mother Suistamo dialect. It does not have G or D letters. That was a problem for me in school. During Pasala years, our dialect had started to change. When we moved to Kajani, we did not speak pure mother Suistamo or father Suojärvi dialect. I finished my school in Kajani. After the school I stayed at home. There was a lot of work still to be done clearing the land and the stumps. We did not burn the stumps in a pile. We made firewood out of it. They lasted for years. One of my high points in school was when I went to school party wearing new boots and new riding pants. In Hevosuo there were quite a number of boys my age. In nearby forests there was lots of room to explore. Sometimes we stayed out several days. We slept in the open and fished in little ponds. The area where we hiked was about 20 kilometers. We had time for many things. Once the boys made a hole in the moss near the pond and then dove into the hole and came up in the pond. In the winter we skied a lot. One type of skiing was straight down a steep hill, like dive skiing. At one time we were thinking of starting a hiking club. Name suggestions were Huhkaya Conquerors or Sivapuro Roamers. When living in Hevosso we started doing field sports. Our neighbor, Uncle Grigory, had the best yard for it. We made wooden window protectors to use during the ball games. 1953, we started sports club Kajan in Haka. All the members at first were boys from Karjala. My parents were Christians and believed in Jesus and their personal Lord and Savior and were involved in establishing Pentecostal churches in Suojärvi and later in Kajani. As I grew up in this home, I realized that I could not count on being acceptable to God only because of my parents trusting Him, but I had to make a personal decision to follow Him as my Lord. I did this in Kajani as a teenager when I saw many of my friends falling in the lifestyle that ultimately destroyed them. Later on, I made my personal basics of life rules and my short version of I believe faith declarations. Basics of life. 
respect God, sovereign creator, Lord of life and loving father, more than anything. Respect your neighbor as, your, as you would yourself, but your parents above others. Find good priority for your life. Be honest, no lying, cheating or stealing. Be willing to work, earn your living. Practice self-control, don't accept, expect others to guide you the right way. Have sense of responsibility, be tolerant and forgiving in human relationships. Make friends, not enemies. I believe, trust, God is spirit, creator, Lord, justice, long-suffering, merciful, holy and love. God was in human form in Jesus. Jesus was atonement for our rebellious hearts, is the way, truth and the life, the object of our prayers and worship. Holy Spirit is God in us and with us. I have eternal life and favor with God. In 1953, I got a job at the Kayani Pulp and Paper Mill. My first work was to sort scrap metal in the scrapyard and then to be blacksmith's helper. I worked there some years before I was time to go to the armed service. I was placed in Luanet Yarvi Air Force Base as a weatherman. After my military service, I returned to Kayani Mill. In 1959, I started my st studies in Kuopio Technical School, graduated in 1963. In this school yearbook, besides my picture, was the text. Paretanen Raimo Ilpo Ylermi, 1936, a bachelor. Paretanen did not want to be bearded and behaved in every and behaved in every way as one with moral upbringing. He did not even participate in lotteries, but filled his place with ski kickball teams. Strange man, if there was a choice between flowers and ways, he would choose flowers. His motto, I oppose. I went back to work in Kayani Mill and worked there as a planner and during shutdowns as a supervisor. Soon after this I bought a new car, Ford Taunus 15M. This made my supervisor Enzio Ukko Nuttila to wonder out loud. He had a loud voice and he said that in his day they were lucky to get a bicycle. Another man who used his voice generously was the paperside boss Jori Pesonen. My brother Reino moved to Toronto, Canada in 1966 and I followed him a year later. That started a new phase in my life. Raimo Paradonen Memoirs, Part 2 When I was planning to go to Canada, my intention was not to stay there for a long time. My journey started at the end of January 1967 in Kayani Airport. First stop was Jyväskylä. It happened that besides me was sitting Kajani mill manager, Mr. Tähtinen. When he heard that where I was going, he said, It's a good thing that young men go to learn, but over there is so different, so different. These words I will remember the rest of my life. From Jyväskylä we flew to Helsinki. There we boarded Finnair Caravel to London. Next stop was Montreal, where I went through the immigration check. On the plane, two English women tried to talk to me with bad results. I had now taken a step to a new culture. In Montreal, I was vaccinated because the date on my vaccination certificate from Finland was not clear to the officer. After this, I was ready to go to Toronto, where my brother Reino was. Reino was there waiting for waiting with his wife Soile. We drove to Reino's apartment and settled in. I stayed with them the rest of the winter until I got my language school finished. After that I got a job in an old paper mill, Don Valley Mill. They had an old Dominion paper machine. It was an antique machine compared to Kayani Mill. Now I had my own place, room and board in a Finnish family. I changed jobs and went to work for Continental Can, 
in a factory making packing materials. They had their own restaurant. When I asked the waiters for a soup, it sounded to her like I said soap. She laughed after, every time after when she saw me. At that time I bought a new car, Chrysler Barracuda. I had sold my Ford Taunus 15M in Finland and the money was enough to pay for this new car. I left this work too and went to work for Atlantic Packaging. Around this time I had started to go out with a Finnish nurse, Maria Nieminen. She had come to Canada with her family at the age of 17. She was born in Viipuri, Karelia. We were married May 31st, 1969. Our life in Toronto continued now as a married couple. In summer 1970, we made a long trip to the West Coast with my nice Barracuda. During this trip, I went to Enza Goodside Eurocan office in Vancouver just to see if any work was available. They had a paper mill under construction in Kirimat, B.C., and so it happened that the machine department chief Win Hobson was there and hired me on the spot. Win had been in India with his family in the British colonial times. Now I had a new job on the west coast and a long move ahead. We drove 4,000 kilometers back to Toronto. Maria stayed in her work in the hospital and I started driving back out west with my brother's father-in-law, Veikko Rukkila. Veikko was going to Vancouver to manage the Finnish rest home there. From Vancouver I drove along the 1500 kilometers to Kirimat. We got to know this road very well in later years. At first I could live in the construction camp. Work went on 12 hours a day, 7 days a week. For two months I worked as a millwright. After that, I was moved to planning department. It was time to remember again what Mr. Tähtinen told me on the plane leaving Kajani. Maria followed me a month later and our little bits of furniture are right too, moved by the company. We got a place in multi-floor apartment building. We had arrived in a place that was to be our home for the next 16 years. Scenery was beautiful and different compared to our old place. Kirimat is at the end of about 100 km long inlet. The mill construction was finished in 1971. There was a big Finnish community at the time, about 70 families. After one year we decided to start building our own house. Our neighbor Esko Venäläinen got his house built by a Finnish carpenter, Elis Pentinen. Esko warned me that don't give the job to Ellis by the hour but make a contract for the whole project. In the end, Ellis did not get the house finished this way either. He left to build his own house in Vancouver area. It was a difficult situation for us and the bank didn't like it either. It was still troubling us when we sold the house years later. Later, Ellis's house in Vancouver burned and he died with it of the injuries. At this time, Maria was expecting our first baby and because of some difficulties, had to stay in hospital long before the baby was born. Sadly, the baby did not live a long time and was buried in Kitimat. These were demanding busy time for us. I was working long hours and slept whenever I had a chance. With our neighbor Esko Venäläinen, and we put a roof on our house. Esko's strength of character and his humor helped. He could lighten the minds of others. We got the permit to move in, but to finish the house took another two years. On the move-in day, our belongings were carried out of our apartment, and newcomers Yrjö and Marjatta Ikävalko were moving in. They were our neighbors later in Gibsons for many years until they moved back to Finland. In 1971 we started the Kirimat Finnish Club, Finnish Sports and Recreation Club. I am on the 
one of the founding members and the first chairman. For those who like fishing and hunting in the outdoors, Kirimat is the place to be. The amount of snow in the winter is, can be just about unbelievable. The many fishing and hunting trips, all the outdoors activities are among our best memories. Hauling the moose meat to the truck, seeing bears and wolves in the wild, ice fishing with fish bay in several kilograms were all worth the effort. In those years we also learned to fly a small plane, Hypers. Flying in the mountains has its special excitement. Vesa Kettunen was one of my hunting partners with whom I fished and hunted for 10 years, bringing home at least one move to share every year. And from three weekend fishing trips had enough to last all year. My parents visited us in Kirimat on our father's comment on forestry practices. What a big waste of wood. We were blessed with two more children, Kari Steven in March 1972 and Mirva Stephanie in October 1973. Kirimat was a great safe town for raising children. The children began their education in Kirimat Christian School and enjoyed the weekends and summers camping and swimming and in winter skiing and skating and playing in the more than abundant snowfalls we were at the pastime of choice. We also enjoyed showing them many places in Toronto and Finland with grandparents and on both sides. Hawaii and Disneyland were explored in the winter holidays. In 1985 I went to work for Alcan Aluminum Company. Aluminum production is, the, is in Kirimat and hydroelectric power generation station is in Kemano nearby. My first, my, my job was in Kemano. Later the water height difference from the lake to the turbines is 800 meters. Water comes down to the turbines in tunnels dug inside the mountains. My mother visited us in Kemano. 1986 I started to work for Alstom Industries when they opened an office in Vancouver. We made work trips also to Finland. Our house in Kirimat was sold and we bought a new one in Vancouver. After Alstrom I went to work for Pumps and Power. They, manu they manufactured industrial pumps. Earlier we had visited the town of Gibson, about 20 kilometers north of Vancouver and decided to move once more. We arrived and decided to buy a hot motel where we also lived. We ran this business until 1994. We were richer in experience, if nothing more. After this, we bought our own house with a beautiful view of the bay, small islands and North Vancouver mountains. February 10th, 1992, there came an addition to our family. My daughter gave birth to a 9-pound, 6-ounce baby boy, Dylan, Caleb, Matthew Alexander Partanen. Another addition to the family in 2002, February 25th, was six pound five ounce Jacob Michael Benjamin, born to daughter Mirva, giving Dylan a baby brother. And another brother born February 3rd, 2003. A tiny 4 pound 11 ounce addition was Lev Misha, born to Mirva. In the winter of 1995, my life changes. I had a stroke, and as a result, my right arm and right leg were injured. I was 60 years old and had thought to work until 65 at least, but that didn't happen. To all the years, I have had a strong connection to my old homeland. We have visited there many times and once went all the way to our old house in Suojärvi, what is now under Russian rule. To me it looked like the Russians are bad tenants. Abandoned old pig farm in the middle of the town did not look nice. 
We also went to Petrosko to see my aunt Ida and cousins Sergei and Evgen. Ida lived there in a rundown apartment building. We also went to Veskelis village to see Ida's daughter-in-law Mirja. We went to the city of Vipuri too, where my wife Maria was born. We also went to visit Estonia, which is a relative nation to Finland, south of the Gulf of Finland. My mother, sister and brother, six of them, all moved to Soviet Union in the 1930s. My mother, the oldest, did not go. When I asked my aunt about her life in, in Soviet Union, she started to cry. My mother's brother disappeared there somewhere. My aunt Elsa lived in the village near the city of Petroskoy, but did not come to see us. We went to Petrosko in a tourist bus and from there to Suojärvi with my cousin Sergei in his Moskovitz car. His brother Evgen did not come. On that trip I saw the use of the Russian credit card. When the gas tank was full, Sergei just got into the car and swung his arm at the station keeper woman. Her mouth was moving but we could, could not hear her. Sergei casually waved his hand to her and commanded, <laughs> commanded, everything belongs to the people. In summer 1998, we had a trip with Dillon and other relatives in a two-car caravan to California and through nine states, including the Grand Canyon, Yellowstone Park, and the Great Redwood Forest. The following year we crossed the international dateline and equator on a five-week trip to Fiji and Australia. The highlight of the trip was a short cruise in the Coral Princess from Townsville to Cairns over the Great Barrier Reef. In, 19, in 2001 we moved to a different house, one of 29 houses that are for senior tenants. That is where I now live with my wife as a pensioner. The use of my arm and leg are quite good. Until recently I was still skiing in the mountains. I still do hiking. All this is only possible because there are some other Finnish men that take me along. Like our friend Esko Ahtian who also wrote and translated my memoirs. A great many thanks for his friendship. In the summer of 2005, I had the pleasure to go to Finland with, with my daughter's 13-year-old son, Dillon. For him, it was a great experience. Old castles, old eastern border, wartime defense lines from the Winter War and the Continuation War. We went to see my sister's son, Ari, in Kuhmo, and he took us fishing on the lake. In 2007, I, as a technical engineer, was fascinated with the operation and history of the Panama Canal. So we took one last trip to find out how it worked. The cruise ran from New Orleans to the canal to Vancouver. It was a great experience. It turned out that my stay in Canada became lifelong. Finnish language and Canadian culture are always going to be part of me. This is the Canadian multiculturalism, Canadian mosaic. With warm greetings, Raimo Paratonen Gibson's